Welcome to Overbiked Randonneuring, where we try to optimize for success in long distance cycling events. If you walk up to the start line of a brevet or other long distance event, they often start before the sun comes up. And so everyone's got their lights on. And sometimes it looks a bit like a rave with dozens and dozens of these flashing red lights on people's bikes. Now, that's a little bit of a problem because these flashing red lights are not legal according to the Audax Club Parisian, the governing body of randonneuring. Often though, this rule just simply goes unenforced. The problem is that when riding behind other cyclists who have these flashing lights, it can cause dizziness and nausea. And this can be a really big problem for other riders' comfort, but also for our safety. On top of that, it's not even certain that flashing red light is the best choice for our personal safety, but I think one reason that these are so popular right now is we're almost forced into it if we don't ride with a dynamo system. I did a survey of rear lights offered by any uh, popular light company I could find, and what I found was almost every company only offers very small rear red lights with very small batteries. And to get any sort of longevity in those tiny lights with tiny batteries, they just have to use some sort of flashing mode. And so we're basically stuck having few to almost zero options for a battery powered light for long distance cycling that we can actually use in solid mode. However, uh, Magic Shine offers the CME 300, which is, it's kind of a chunk, it's pretty big. And that's because it has a large battery and constant modes that they claim will last through entire brevet events, perhaps even up to 600 kilometers. So in today's video, I'd like to talk a little bit about rear light etiquette and also explore if the CME 300 can actually meet our needs. I'll give you a heads up, all the claims on the website are not exactly what they seem, but we'll get into that in a little bit. All right, before we get into any product discussion, we should talk about safety first. And I feel like a lot of cyclists believe that having blinking or flashing rear red lights like this uh, just provide better visibility and better overall safety than a solid red light. The research on this is a little bit mixed. There are some representative studies in the video description below, and I also recommend that you check out their reference lists for further reading but if one wanted to, they could find support for whatever style of light that they prefer. In my skimming over the research, I found a few general trends, and uh, there is some support for the flashing red light. It seems to overperform in urban areas and in the daytime, but the constant mode also has some areas where it's a bit stronger, specifically in the nighttime and uh, in rural areas where drivers have a, uh, longer distance to recognize the cyclist, the steady state light allows the driver to better gauge the distance between their car and the cyclist themselves. Beyond flashing lights versus constant mode lights, one area of safety for visibility that's been proven time and again to be highly effective is that our biomotion, our cycling movement, is visible by car drivers. This is the reason that, as randonneurs, we're required to wear reflective anklets when we're cycling at night, because that movement tells the car drivers that we exist, that we're human, and that we're cyclists. And that's the reason that products like the Redshift Arclight pedals exist, and also why here on the CME 300, they've added the OptiTracing light, which illuminates a cone down towards the ground. And because this is positioned on our seat post, this will illuminate the backs of our legs so that oncoming drivers can notice our cycling motion. So overall, the choice between a blinking and constant mode light is not perfectly clear, but that leads us to our next point. Long distance cycling events are an individual pursuit, but they're often done with very large groups. And among those cyclists, there are many of us, myself included, who are quite sensitive to extended exposure to these blinking red lights. For me, it causes at first discomfort, then a little bit of nausea, and eventually if I'm behind someone for too long, uh, I get disoriented and it feels even a little uncomfortable to be on the bike. This is true for others too. Uh, I've even had a few comments under my videos where I have just a short clip riding behind someone who has one of these flashing red lights, and they note how even the video clip itself causes them discomfort. So, even if 
There's a very minor improvement in awareness of car drivers by using a blinking red light. Keep in mind that the research is inconclusive and there's major, major benefits for our fellow cyclists and fellow randonneurs in using a constant mode light. This is part of my collection of red rear lights. The reason I have so many is because on long distance events, in order to keep constant lighting mode, I usually carry three different lights on my bike. One of them will be turned on constant mode, another one will be recharging with a battery bank, and a third one will be sitting ready and waiting for when this one dies and needs to go on the charger. This is a big pain. It's way more faff than I really care to do, and I'm sure anyone with a dynamo hub right now is probably laughing and thinking how silly this is. However, I'd much rather not be using my meager power to power these electric lights. The reason this is such a pain is because of their unit size. If we take the mounting rubbers off of these, this little magic shine here is 18 grams. There's not much battery power you can pack into an 18 gram light. This one here, again, 17, 18 grams. It only lasts a very short time when on constant mode. Here, my longest lasting light, aside from the magic shine, 19 grams. Most rear light manufacturers are just afraid to make anything that's rather large. Compare that to the CME 300. 80 grams. It's over four times the weight of any of these lights, and that's because it's got a big battery inside. And that big battery allows for pretty bright light to last for a very long time. My original intention for this video was to do a rear light roundup. So I surveyed over a dozen different manufacturers of rear lights and looked for a light that had over 1000 milliamp hour battery size and also offered a constant mode that would produce more than 10 lumens claimed intensity for longer than 16 hours. This would be an entire day of constant mode, which could then be recharged at a hotel at night. And what I found was very disappointing. Of the lights that I found with large batteries, most of them uh, didn't offer constant modes that were either higher than 10 lumens or that lasted a long time. Manufacturers would just make their big battery lights be really, really bright and only last for a short time. Others would have like five lumen output modes that would last like 25 hours or something like that. But five lumens is not really good for visibility. What we were left with in my survey were exactly two models that reported their numbers effectively. The Magic Shine CME 300 and the Lazine Strip Pro AI Alert 400 Plus Rear. Both of these are about $60 each, but only the Magic Shine is available in my country. I was geo-blocked from purchasing the design from other sources. I also had to reach out to Magic Shine to confirm their marketing claims about this light, and that's because the claims on the website didn't really match up with like battery size versus lumen output claims of any other light. And it's not like that these LEDs are actually magic, uh, so their efficiency is going to be pretty set in stone. But after sending my question, uh, and I think based on that my Evo 1700 review uh, gave them some sales, they did offer to send me out this CME 300 for free. And you can see that down here with what I like to call my transparency icons. Uh, anytime that I'm getting a product for review, I think you as a viewer should know whether I spent my own money on it, whether it was sent out, or whether I got a discount and also if there are any relationships with, uh, with the product manufacturer. So you can see these in almost all of my product review videos for the past year and a half, and I look forward to using them in the future too. Uh, there's a link in the video description where anybody can download these icons and very easily add them into their videos. But with that, let's get on and see if the CME 300 is all it's cracked up to be. As seen earlier, it's 80 grams for the body, this is the seat post mount, 13 grams, and it uses a miniaturized quarter turn. Uh, this is the sort of round or semi-arrow or D-shaped seat post clamp. It also includes this clamp here, which clips onto the saddle rails. Only six grams, that would be the weight weenie option. It also comes with a USB uh, type A to type C cable. This can be good for uh, charging with the battery pack 
For the CME 300 lighting modes, this is low constant, and the optitracing light is breathing. On high constant mode, the power output goes from 20 lumens up to 100 lumens, and the optitracing light also goes up to 100 lumens. This is turned on or off depending on if the light sensor detects that it's daytime or nighttime. This only runs at night. There are three different flashing modes. In flashing modes, the optitracing light is on constant. And here our last mode goes from sort of a low constant setting and then it flashes a little bit on a high mode. Things are looking pretty peachy for the CME 300. It's a nice bright light. It's got really interesting and valuable features like this uh, opti-tracing light to illuminate our feet while they're moving, enhanced visibility, better safety. It's all looking really good. This should allow us as long distance cyclists to pursue best practices for rear lighting if the battery life matches the claims that Magic Shine makes on their website. And I tested this. I turned this light on and periodically checked its brightness using a Lux meter. And what I found was really disappointing. Uh, first, longevity of the light just being on is about three quarters of the claims made by Magic Shine. This is on high constant mode and on low constant mode. On top of that, the intensity of the light decreases over time. For about the last third or so on low constant mode for the CME 300, the output is about half, just a little over half of the original. And so again, this is nowhere in the marketing materials. There's no way for a consumer to know that that's the performance that this light is going to see. Uh, I emailed Magic Shine about this and they responded to redo my test. So I redid my test. I stuck this right in front of a fan. I put it on high and the results were exactly the same within five minutes. It was actually five minutes less when it was placed in front of a fan. These rear lights don't put out enough power to get hot to affect battery performance. Uh, my biggest disappointment with the marketing is that they didn't need to fudge their numbers. The recorded performance I got from the CME 300 is still better than any claims made by any competition. So even with 75% runtime, this still outperforms every other claim that's made by any rear light. So I, I just don't see the need to try to get those numbers a little bit higher. So where does that leave us? Well, I think as long distance cyclists, we really need to start pursuing using constant mode lighting, both day and night on our bikes. If we're gonna do this with a battery powered light, it needs to have a large battery and be supplied with constant modes that suit our needs as far as runtime is concerned. Among those that are suitable, I think the Magic Shine CME 300 is probably the number one choice in that product category. And so I highly recommend it. Even though the marketing claims are completely separate from the actual product performance, the product itself is excellent. As a result, uh, I'm happy to include a 15% discount code in the video description. This is a single use code. And there's also an affiliate link to the CME 300's webpage. In the meantime, I'm going to continue pestering Magic Shine and other light companies to make sure that their product marketing matches their product's performance. These are critical for our safety on the road, and we should know exactly the kind of performance that we're getting. If you have opinions, strong opinions on taillights, if you had experiences where flashing lights made you feel dizzy or sick, leave those in the comments below. And if you see people on the road, in randonneuring events that are using flashing lights, you should try to be more like Kitty. Go up to them, tell them, hey, we need to be using constant lights. These can make people feel sick. And by raising awareness, hopefully we can all be safer and more comfortable on the road. And if you have any recommendations for rear tail lights that can last for a really long time, put them in the video description too. I'd be really happy to check them out and always be searching for the best equipment so that we can have maximum chances of success at long distance cycling. Ride safe, everyone. Take care. See you in the next video.